Hey there folks and welcome back. Up to now we've seen several examples involving triple integrals, but I know this can be a challenging topic, so I wanted to do one more where we put everything together. Here we're looking for the triple integral over the 3D region E bounded between the planes x equals 0, x plus z equals 1, and the parabolic cylinder z equals y squared. The function we're integrating is f of x, y, z equals z. Okay, we're being asked to integrate over some crazy 3D region, so the first step is to sketch out the region and set up our iterated integrals. Here, our region is bounded in part by the plane x equals 0, which is this plane right here, right? the y, z plane. We are also bounded by this plane, x plus z equals 1. We can sketch that plane by using the same tricks that we've used in earlier videos. We can figure out where it crosses the three coordinate axes and join up those points with straight lines to visualize our plane. To figure out where it crosses the x-axis, for example, we can set all other variables equal to zero, and we'll find from this equation that x is one. The plane crosses right here. Similarly, it's gonna cross the z-axis when z is one, right up here. If we join up these two points with a straight line, we get a line segment that must be contained in our plane. Now what about y? There's no y in this equation. So in fact, our plane doesn't cross the y-axis. No matter where we slice our plane along the y-axis, it's gonna look exactly the same. So for instance, if I slice over here at y equals one, I'm gonna see the same line that we got over here at y equals zero. And I would see that same line again if I sliced it over here at y equals minus one. So now we can start to see our plane taking shape. Finally, our region is bounded by the parabolic cylinder z equals y squared. At first, you might not know how to draw this region, but it's really not that bad. After all, if this were y equals x squared, it would be a parabola in the xy plane. Now we've replaced y with z and x with y, so we have a parabola in the yz plane. It might look something like this. Since there's no x present in this equation, no matter where we slice our graph along the x-axis, it's gonna look exactly the same. So at this x value, we're gonna get the same parabola, at this x value, we're gonna get the same parabola, and so on. You can see that I've kept it underneath this pink plane because this is exactly where our region is gonna be enclosed. Our region E is this three-dimensional solid here, bounded between the red plane, the pink plane, and the parabolic cylinder. Okay, now we're being asked to compute a triple integral over this region, which means we're gonna need to set up three iterated integrals. What order should we use? It turns out that in this example, the region is actually quite friendly, and you can integrate it in whatever order you like. You just have to set it up accordingly. We'll talk about other orders at the end of the video, but for now, why don't we integrate first with respect to x? To set up the bounds on an integral with respect to x, we should draw an arrow through our region pointing in the direction of the positive x-axis. You can see that it's gonna enter our region through the back, through the plane x equals zero, and it's gonna exit our region through the front, through this pink plane, x plus z equals one. So our lower bound on the integral is definitely zero, and for our upper bound, we just need to rewrite this equation with x as a function of the other variables. So x is one minus z. One minus z is the upper bound. Okay, now we need to figure out what's happening with y and z. We're gonna ignore the x and project our region down onto the yz plane. You'll notice that we get this very nice parabolic region, which I'm gonna sketch for you over here on the right. The parabola is z equals y squared. It's this parabola here in the yz plane. Of course, the parabola isn't allowed to extend upward forever. It's bounded above by the pink plane, which means it has to stop when z reaches a height of one. It therefore follows that our y values are bounded between minus one and one. Aha, it looks like we can integrate over this region by thinking of it as a region of type one. Z is gonna go from the lower bound, which is y squared, all the way up to this upper bound, z equals one. So here are my bounds on the z integral, which I'll write next. And finally, on the outside, we have our y integral bounded between two constants, minus one and one. Now the actual process of integrating this function is extremely straightforward, and so I'm not gonna work through all the steps. I'll let you verify as an exercise that this triple integral evaluates to eight over 35. 
To wrap up this video, let's check out a couple other ways that we could have set up this triple integral. Maybe you wanted to set up this triple integral a little differently. If you don't want to integrate first with respect to x, you can choose a different variable, say z. To figure out the bounds on a z integral, we have to draw an arrow through our region moving from bottom to top. It enters our region through the parabolic cylinder, z equals y squared, so that will be our lower bound, and it will exit the region through the pink plane, which we could write as z equals 1 minus x. 1 minus x is the upper bound. To figure out what's happening with x and y, we have to project this entire region E down onto the xy plane, and I think you'll see we'll again get some sort of a parabola. To figure out the equation of this parabola, we notice that this parabola is really coming from this curve right here, being projected down into the xy plane. This curve is the intersection of our yellow parabolic cylinder, z equals y squared, and our pink plane, z equals 1 minus x. Putting these equations together, we find that 1 minus x is equal to y squared, and by rearranging we get x equals 1 minus y squared. Ah, that's a parabola in the xy plane that opens leftward. It looks something like this. Of course, it can't go on forever because it gets stopped here by the plane x equals zero. It gets stopped by the y-axis. Ah, so now we can see that this really is a region of type two, right? x is gonna be bounded between the y-axis, x equals zero, and the parabola, x equals one minus y squared. So these are gonna be the bounds on my next integral, which is with respect to x. Finally, my y terms are always going between this value, which will turn out to be minus one, and this value, which will turn out to be one. So I have the integral from minus one to one, dy, and this is another acceptable way to set up the triple integral. Finally, maybe you wanna start this problem by first integrating with respect to y. I encourage you at this point to pause the video and try the setup for yourself because you have all the tools to do it. If we're gonna start with y, we draw an arrow through our region moving in the direction of the positive y-axis. Here, you can see that the arrow is going to both enter and leave our region through the parabolic cylinder z equals y squared. So to get our upper and lower bounds, we're gonna to have to separate this equation to separately describe this part of the cylinder on the negative y-axis and this part of the cylinder on the positive y-axis. We can separate this equation as y equals plus or minus root z. So the negative value, y equals minus root z, describes this portion of the parabolic cylinder, and y equals positive root z is gonna describe this portion. This means that minus root z is the lower bound and root z is the upper bound. That takes care of y. To figure out x and z, we project this entire region E down onto the xz plane. It's gonna give us this right triangular region here. The region is bounded above by the pink plane, which has equation x plus z equals one, or equivalently, z equals one minus x. So if I draw this region for you in the xz plane over here on the right, you'll see that we have a region that's both of type one and type two we can integrate over this region in any order we choose. So I'm gonna choose type one. Z is bounded between the x-axis, which is z equals zero, and the line, z equals one minus x, and x, according to our picture here, is going between zero and one. So for z, my bounds are zero and one minus x, and for x, my bounds are zero and one, and there you go, a third acceptable way to set up this triple integral.